Dave here. How are you? Today is the 21st of February, 2021. If someone could please let me know whether the stream is coming through nicely, that would be terrific. Uh, and sound and all that kind of stuff, just to make sure. All right, whilst I'm waiting for that, I'll have a quick chat about what's going to be happening on the show. Thumbs up, already done. Excellent, thank you, thank you. Uh, I have set it to a very short latency, so hopefully it'll come up. All right, all is good. Thanks, Bob. All right, so today on the show, let's make a couple of custom light fittings. Now, this here is a downlight. It's a plug-in style downlight. And I have these in my ceiling in a couple of the rooms in the house. The good thing about these, this particular one, I'm not promoting this brand, but you've got this three different temperatures, 3,000, 4,000, and 5,700 Kelvin. This room is 5,700 Kelvin. That's the temperature that I have all my lights in here at. Now, the thing is, this is great for a workshop, but not great for when I'm in the house wanting to relax. So I have 3,000 Kelvin in the house. So it's a much warmer light. Now, when I say warmer, I mean it appears warm. We have this thing in our head where we feel red is hot, blue is cold. Well, with Kelvin, it's the other way around. And that's how you can tell how bright a light basically is. So there was a guy called Lord Kelvin, give you a quick history. He, um, he heated a block of carbon and took note of the colors it was at different temperatures, degrees Celsius. And so at that point, he wrote um, X amount of like 5,700 Kelvin, the carbon block was white. To help you think about that a little bit, the old days of a Bunsen burner, when you had a red flame on the Bunsen burner, that was a cold flame, like this is at school, uh, like a gas flame. To increase the temperature, you needed it to be blue or white. And so hence, the hotter something is, the bluer it gets. I know it seems counterintuitive, we see uh, Antarctic blue ice down there. Oh, that's cold. Well, that's, it messes with your head a bit. Anyway, we'll get there. We'll get there. Good morning, Fix It. Morning, Wayne, Alan, David, Paul, Ian, Matt, Paul, Bob, <laughs> everyone that said g'day. So moving along on the show, that's what we're going to do. We're going to make some lamps, some, some light fittings. And I'll show you a picture if I have them here. Uh, this is the room that they're going to go in. And you can see there's one up in the top corner there. I've already got kind of hanging over the edge of that lip. Now see that lip on the, on the bookcase that I built? I need to replicate the light fitting to go into there to look as though it was always built that well. Let me see if I have another picture. So this one might help you a little bit more. Down the side there, I've got a bull nose on the outside of that capping apron and then the bookshelf itself is below that so coming back to this camera uh, I need to make something like that now it's all good good and well to say that's what we're going to do but then we have to actually nut it out now I don't use things like um, computer generated assistance unless of course it's stuff for the CNC. Now this is going to be made by all the machines that I have in this workshop. This is the bottom piece that's going to marry into that flat section. This one is the top piece that's going to go over the top, hide everything of the light and you see up here that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to create that. <coughs> Pardon me, a quick drink. How was Cole's show? Is he still going or has he stopped and uh, everyone's over here now? <clears throat> All right. So that's what we're going to do. Um, next is a neat way of sanding the lid on my cedar box. And the box is just over here. And I'll show you how I set that up and sanded it. So even though it came off the table saw perfectly, it's even better. It's just beautiful. Um, Upgrading my dust extraction soon. It's very exciting. I've got some fittings here to show you and the six inch blast gate that I got from Australian, oh, sorry, 
autoblastgates.com.au. Uh, the other big news for the week is John has finally had his kidney removed. This is John Lafferty who did all the 3D printing. If you've been putting orders in, you know, just take your time because John is in intensive care in recovery after being on pain medication that has become an addiction to him. And the kidney has been removed and now he's on dialysis and it's looking fantastic. I'm going to try and drop in and see him, but it won't be today. Um, and there's something else I'll let you know about at the end of the week. But how good is it that uh, John's finally, finally, finally managed to get rid of this polycystic kidney disease? disease kidney which is about this big where it should only be about that big huge absolutely huge so happy for and for julia as well all right let's get started i'm going to use some pine and the pine is um, and also we'll talk about paul mumford has sent in a viewers project as well this might sound like it's a lot to get through but we're going to cruise for it pretty easily um that 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 let me get this other piece of paper which I have here. It's got my list of things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create this three quarter inch concave section in the side of a piece of pine. So it's, uh, it's, it's going to marry over that bullnose really perfectly. I was thinking about using hollow and rounds hand planes, but the hollow and rounds that I have are a little bit too big. So that's what we're going to do now. Cole is still going, is he? <laughs> Open up two browsers, have Colin on one side, have me on the other. All right, I'm going to switch to the other camera down here and let's have some fun. All right, that's fantastic news for, um, for John. Now you'll see here, what I've got is I have what's called a core box bit. Now basically it's a semicircular router cutter and it's three quarters of an inch diameter, so 18 or 19.05 millimeters for the pedantic ones like me. I have my router table already set up so that the fence is going to be right at the point where the, the, the cutter finishes cutting. So I'll have a tiny little bit of wood left there and a tiny little bit of wood there. I've got the feather board locked into the T-track here so that it's going to hold the timber there straight directly for me. I only need to do around about 600 millimeters of pass and then I'm going to take it over to the capex and dock it. So put the eye muffs on. Turn the big dusty on. Let it wind up. I'm using radiata pine, but this is premium pine, clear, pretty pricey. And I'm going to tip this up like so and feed it in there. I'm going to go through for a couple of feet and then stop. You watch this. This is absolutely beautiful. Come on, keep going. Let's hit the fence on the other side. There we go. There you go. What do you think of that? That's pretty cool. That's beautiful. Just off centre, but I think it's going to be okay. Now I'm going to take it over to the capex and we're going to dock two of them to 235 millimetres because that's what my plan says to do. I already have the saw set up. Spin you around. So hold on as we go for a little ride over here. Just check that we've got things and have a quick look in the window. Um, good news, yes, good news. Uh, Press of John have been answered. Woodworking, Don, good morning. Good morning, Don. How are you? I've already set this up. Let me bring this up a little and down like so. I've set this up to 235 millimeters, which is the width that's shown on my plan. I'll spin this back around 
this way and bring it up to there. That's all locked. Beautiful. We'll do the cut. Do a scribe cut first. Okay, that's my first blank. I'm going to do two because I've got two to do. I'm going to move this across a little bit. It's just getting him away a touch. See, that's looking pretty good. Scribe cut first. Done. I'm going to cut this part off because I can. I'll come around the other side. Done. I'll come around this side now and switch the cameras. Back here. Oh, I forgot to bring the wood with me. <laughs> what a wally. Not to worry. Not to worry. There we go. Now that part there seemed like a very daunting task. It sits quite well, doesn't it? There you go. You can see that it's on the round. And that's on the round. Lovely. So we've done step one and two. And I need to cut two more at 167 millimeters. Now, the thing with this is this is going to be the top section that goes onto the nosing. The next piece I cut is going to go underneath here and it will actually come this way and also be back a little bit from the front as well. So it's going to marry perfectly. It's going to replicate what's already there. So it's going to come along, come around where the light is and back. And no one will be the wiser that it's something that I did later on. So I need two at 167 millimeters. Um, I'll just dock those. Give me a sec. 167. Beautiful. Scribe and cut first. Didn't quite finish that one. Next one, and we'll be back over there. Okay. There we go. So there we go. There's, there's our blank. So you can see there's the concave. This will be stepping back in underneath the piece that's proud. And out the front here, it will look all to be exactly the same. Morning, Dave from Bygones Woodworks. Morning. Good morning. All right, what's my next step? That's that done. Compass the arcs. All right. Now I have two arcs that I have to create. One is 84 millimeters, and the other one on the big fellow is 118. Now I don't have any newfangled compass. So what I'm going to do, uh, you added a back hole for trenches after seeing it here. Excellent. That works fantastic. Uh, I'm going to use this set. Now, this is either my mother's or my father's. Both of them were in the industry kind of thing. Mum was a tracer uh, and artist, and my dad was a mechanical engineer. So these are their stuff. Dad hasn't been with us for, oh man, I mean, he's been gone a long time. Mum's still kicking though. Mum's going great. Uh, 93 this year, unbelievable. All right, let's do a measurement, and also we'll get a square. Just a little combination square will do me. 
Now with a combination square, you can cheat. You can set the distance up that you want. So half of 235 is the width that I've done this is close enough to 118. So I'm going to set this up to 118. Now when I say it's close enough to 118, that's because I'm going to be sanding and rounding over and all that kind of stuff. So I think we're going to be all right. Pencil. Let's go to Carl Cam for this. Here we go. There. 118. So I'm going to come in 118. And in 118. And in 118. And we'll see that thickness of pencil on all of that kind of rubbish, that's not being good. Oh, it's actually it was at 117. That's why. Everything combined, uh, sorry, it was at 119. There we go. That's looking a bit better. See that? That's the center for my compass to go to. I'll do it on this one as well, whilst I have it. This pencil has seen sharper days, hasn't it? That's pretty good. All right. Compass. Move those guys over there. These didn't lock very well. Not the world's best compass. But I can see that. Can you see the arc that I've created? That's on the top one, and we'll do the same on this one. Now I noticed in this kit, this drawing kit, there were razor blades in there. That's that one. And I think the razor blades were to create a chisel edge on that lead. Pretty amazing. Anyway, so those, those two, and I've got to do on this, this one has got to be 84 millimeters. How easy is it just to zap down with a combination square when you can undo it, David? 84, I'll go 83 because of thickness of pencil is not helping me out. 83, that's good. So how's everyone's week been? Things are looking better here in Australia as far as the, uh, the nasty is concerned.
Test one, how's that? Back, 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 back. Uh, yes, no sound. Okay, how long was the sound gone for? Is it any better now? I'm sure it's good now. Um, it's telling me that I've got sound coming through. You know why? We bought some batteries the other day. I thought I'll get some brand new batteries just in case. And so I put them in instead of the rechargeable batteries. Super heavy duty? I don't think so. These are, I'm going to show you. Super poor duty. <laughs> Since I said nastiness. I have no idea when. Okay. So those razor blades, yes, you had, um, whoop, I'm not up there anymore. They put sticky tape across the back of them to stop you cutting your fingers. It's clever. All right, next thing, next thing, next thing. We've marked that. Now we have to actually cut them, I think. Let me see what my run sheet says to do next. Um, cut on the bandsaw. Well, we will do that. I'm going to move the other three or four minutes. I won't be buying those batteries again. No way, Jose. Let's see if that's going to work all right. I'll do two. I'll do picture in picture, see how it goes. Uh, Yeah, oh, the nastiness of, um, of COVID. We seem to be doing pretty well now. We'll see what happens. Let me go back to this other one. Uh, yeah, I'll move that one down just a touch. Actually, up a touch. And there. I think that'll be good. Here we go. Switch it over to the other side. And I have that camera there. Now I've got this bandsaw hooked up onto an auto blast gate. And the reason I'm going down the back here is to turn the other blast gate off that I had there, which was a manual one. All right, how are we doing for time? 25 past, we're killing it. All right, gotta cut that circle on here. Now I've already set the saw up and Raise, drop the guards down to where they should be and uh, tune it, put the other blade in, making sure that it's tensioned. Yes, it is. Of course, you don't want to start a saw up if it's not tensioned. Let's see how it goes. Okay, that's all open. Not the best bandsaw person in the world, but nonetheless, we're getting there. This is what a disc sand is for. Going way off. Looks all right. There. Oh, gotta see where this camera's pointed. There we go. Do a bigger arc.
That's two. Oh, this is going to be lovely. Have a look at that. You can see what I'm planning on doing. I'll cut the other one because we've got time. I find the tighter radiuses a little bit more of a challenge than the, the wider radiuses. That's a 3 8 blade on there, if anyone was wondering. Um, I could, I could. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is go over to this guy here. I was going to use the, the uh, drill press today, but I don't think I will. And I'll explain to you in a minute why I won't. I'll use it later on today, but not on the show. So let's drag, it was all set up, ready to go. Drag this back. To there. We'll bring this guy in. I don't know if you can see it there. A little close. Let's bring it back. About there, that'll be good. Take it off its wheels and we'll plug it into this. And this give me a sec. Hopefully, my cable will reach. I'm going to have to bring it back this way a bit, guys. And we'll bring the other camera over so you can watch it a bit easier. That's better. It's going to be clear of everything there. Good. Good, good, good. Now, I use this, it's just a piece of very thin cardboard, to change the discs on the sander. It's, it's an easy thing. I'll bring this camera around so you can see it a little bit better. Drop that down and up to there. That might work. Go to camera three. How's that? Cool. So how I change a disc on this without taking the table on, I've shown this to people before. So I peel this back, I slide that in there, put that on, and then I rotate it around to the other side and peel it off and pull it out. It's very, very easy. So this is basically the semicircle of what's there, and I keep it in the cabinet underneath. Yeah. Well, we'll see about his quick disconnect system. It's fine. Um, the only reason I struggle there is because it was I was going in between two different 
um, machines, one down low, the other one up high. Uh, we'll see. I'm going to look at also just a straight out suction point, which some people might think, well, that's really weird, but it works quite well. Take that out of there so I don't cut myself. There we go. All right, I'll put the earmuffs on for this. You may want to turn the volume down a little. So what I'm going to do is travel around to there. Now this disc spins this direction. Some others spin the other direction. So I always go the direction it's going down to the table. I don't put it where it's lifting because that's just asking for trouble. There we go. Dust distraction's running. Come on. See what I mean? Gotcha. So that's looking pretty good. Just a little bit at the top. And a little bit more there. See, now I'm pushing down on it so it doesn't grab and I'm bringing it right out to the edge of the disc. So I'm not on that side. That's looking pretty cool. A little bit more there. That's looking pretty good. And the last one. So it's from this rough old edge here. I could do, but I didn't have the um, line on the other side to follow. You like that, do you, Ben? Excellent. It's all yours. Use it. Use it. Um, where is your rubber cleaning block makes the sanding paper last so much longer? I have it there, but it's a brand new piece of paper. Why would I even bother right at the, <laughs> at the moment, Aussie man? Um, the block is in the cupboard. You've ever seen it before. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is put that there on there. I'm going to drill a hole through here. And then I'm going to have a, do a quick check of my calculations. So let's put that on there. I'm going to do a quarter inch hole. So that's the hole centered, and that's for my hole saw to create a 92 millimeter diameter hole. 
Next thing I wanted, wanted to do was have a look down through here onto the next one to see if I've got it in the right position. It's going to be pretty close. But I don't want it to be pretty close. I want it to be exact. See, now that's looking pretty cool. This bottom one is not going to have any round over on it. The top, I want to create a bull nose on. So let's do that. And to do that, I'm going to go down to the router table again. Bringing this one down, 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 down. And I'm using... Uh, what am I using? I'm using Derek Lark's uh, cable connector that holds things together for me. So when I move the cameras around, they don't pull them apart. Okay, you use it before the paper gets too blocked so you can get all the dust out. Yes, well, I don't think that that little turn on Radiata Pine over that shorter time is going to make any difference to the paper. It really is. There's nothing stuck in it. It looks almost brand new. But I do understand what you're saying. I definitely understand. All right. This is good. I like this. They look good. <laughs> um, now, let me just read this because I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, this and round over the large pieces and drill holes in four. So the next thing I'm going to do before we do that is we, let's have a look at a viewer's project. This is Paul's. Yeah, every time you use the sander, that's good. Good. Um, yep. Uh, Paul, let's have a look here. We'll grab Paul's stuff. Hi, Dave. My daughter Sophie has recently moved out of home into a nice unit with a balcony and discovered she has a green thumb. Hence, there are a lot of plants in pots all over the place, she said. Uh, she would like a plant stand, so I made her one. So let's have a look down here at Paul's pictures. There it is. Okay, Bef being of her generation, one of the stipulations was that it needed to be dismantled easily in case she needed to move on. And whilst this presented a design challenge, it turned out to be a fun project. So there it is, all dismantled. Excellent. I like the way Paul does this. He sends me a little story and he says, image one, use it here. Image two, use it here. In between each paragraph. Uh, the shelves are attached to the rear frame using slotted plates with the lower part of the plates deeper in the cutout. And let's go to the next picture. So that when the screw head in the end of the shelf frame is inserted and forced down, it locks the shelf end firmly against the frame. This is called a peanut joint. Okay, the next, the shelves are supported at the front by side struts and rigidity in the unit is achieved through the dados in these beams that accommodate the sides in the shelf frames and locked in place using brass plated demon bolts. So that's showing the dado. Uh, the interesting thing, let me go to the next pic, uh, about this project is it contains all of the three, three major joints. Shelves, dovetailed, uh, dados for the shelves and side supports, and mortise and tenons, rear frame and shelf frames. As well, the slats are glued and secured to shelf frames using dowels. A jig was made for drilling these as there were 52 dowels in all. So there's that picture. And then the last picture, he says, I've put rubber feet uh, on the bottom to keep the timber out of potential puddles and the finish is marine grade varnish and cabinet makers wax. There's the rubber feet. It can be dismantled or assembled in less than five minutes. Uh, all in all, a very enjoyable project, both from a design and construction point of view. I hope you like it. Well, I'll leave that every, to everyone here. What do you think? Do you think that's uh, worthy of Paul getting a little bit of a round of applause? I think so. That's so cool. Now, if you have a project yourself that you're working on, and you think, well, that's not too bad. I might share that with everyone. Flick it into me in the description below the video here. You've got the description box where it says show more. Click that and then you'll have a whole heap of stuff. There's some affiliate links. 
and also my email address. Oh, and also a link for the second channel. After a couple of weeks, what I do is I take the show off this channel and I move it to the archives. So there's a couple of years there. So if there's something that you thought, oh, I saw Dave do that on the show once, you can quickly flick through on the second channel and find what it was that you were looking for. If I left them all on this channel here, it would just become so congested. All right, all right, let's go down to the other end here. Morning Paul's Lawn Care. It is a great job. I reckon it's fantastic. You know, why not? And it's a bit of love. He said, I said, so did you get the standard payment from your daughter, a cup of coffee? And he said, no, she took me out to lunch. There you go, added bonus. That's so good, bit of father and daughter time and uh, showing her appreciation. That's great. All right, so camera three, we're going back to that one. And let's set this up. I'll tip that up just a touch so that we can do the rounds on the top one. So I have to make sure I don't do it on the bottom one. So otherwise there will be trouble. Move that up out of the way, slide that back and move this one out of the way. Remember, I've taken this yellow thing out. This cannot turn on. All right, uh, I need this little guy here. Of course, I want to take that out. And then relax this and raise it up. Locked. Spanner. Second grab. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. On there, it's what's called the K line. So it's just here. Basically, it's a line with an arrow against it. And that says that's where the top of the collet should be. Don't be tempted to just drop these straight in and go, oh, right, tighten it up. Go to that point. All right. Move that core box bit out of the way. The next cutter I want is a 3 8 And this used to have a K line, but not anymore. So we'll pop that in and raise it up ever so slowly. I don't like letting them drop all the way to the bottom. So it's sitting up around two millimeters from the base. It's one of those things I was told many years ago that it stops heat transfer between the cutter and the router. I don't know if it's true, but it's one of those things that's in the back of my mind. Lower it down. And will that one fit? No, nope, too small. Let's get the next one. Um, yeah, that'll do it. All right, I'm just going to do a visual across here, take it down with a fine adjust, flip it around. Remember, I can't touch that because this is not in the switch. That's looking pretty good. All right. All good. And I'm going to bring this back and relax that. I'll explain why. When I finish doing the, uh, the top section, the bearing isn't going to have anything to be able to be guided on. So I need to make sure that that is closed up and so that the bearing won't have too much to do with it when I turn this piece over and go on the other side. I have to make sure that's clear all the way through, which it is. Tighten up the other screws. About there. Lock it. Okay, I'm going to start it to check that uh, we don't have any problem 
with clearance down here. Travelling well. Now I need to create a round right the way along here, around and then back. And then I have to be able to flip it over. So I can't really rely on the bearing as much as I'd like to. So let's bring this in closer. How's that looking? And I'll just check on the chat. Um, uh, so long. Who's off? Go, oh, Cole. Okay. See you later, Cole. Um, no, no, please hold it closer. Uh, okay, so I'm in closer now, and what I'll do is I'll spin this camera around a little bit so I can show you the K line, and I can actually look at what's happening. I've, all I've done is just I've just turned the monitor around so I can have a look. Um, see that? That's the K line just there. It's basically it's a line with an arrow on it. That's where you set the router cutter in the chuck. Now this is for if you have a um, if you have let me see what am I thinking about uh, if you have the um, <laughs> I've lost it now that's if you're putting it in the CNC it's particularly crucial okay all right turn on this one and turn on this one so we're going to do the bottom round over first. Let's going to have a look. I need to let that go back. I'm too proud. Let's try it again. That's looking pretty cool. I'm going to be safe and use my push block. Do the other side. The bearing is just catching it, which is fantastic news for me. doing for time. I'll stop it there. I'm going to spin this one around. The reason I've stopped it there is because we've got 10 minutes left and I want to show you a couple of other things whilst I have time. So there you go. What do you think of that? That's going to be so nice. I'll do a little clean up there. So we've got the, the hollow there and the round here. And then this one, remember, is going to be staying flat to match the profile that's already there. So I'll sand that, just take the edge off a little bit, and then we'll have it hanging out like that. So this will go under the lip that I was talking about, and this will be the front, and it'll shape everything be perfect. The hole will be the right diameter to take that light fitting, this one and then the hole above will be the same diameter but I'll cut two little wings like I'll cut a wing um, here and a wing there for these guys to hold it 
I think that'll be pretty nice. So I'll, I'll see how it all looks. I'll finish it during the week and I'll take some photos of it on inside. But you can see with the profile that I had to match. There you go. All right, now back to here. I wanted to talk about my blast gate. So you may be aware that I'm putting in a six inch system instead of the four inch system that I have here at the moment. Now this is an automated blast gate. This is six inch PVC and it has a an actuator here, linear actuator. So it pushes that way, which the blast gate is pivoted down here and it opens and then comes back through it. There's none of this sliding plastic. Now there's other things out there that you can get that might be a bit cheaper, but you know, I, it's like I buy once, cry once. I want to get this right before I hang my apron up and just live in here and do nothing else. This would be so much fun. So I want to get it right. So this is, as I say, a six inch. That's a, just a female fitting for six inch DWV sewer. Now there's a couple of things that I need to tell you about as well. Not a lot, but what happens is when this turns on, it turns that actuator down here, turns my dust extractor on by a 12 volt um, figure eight cable. So it's basic bell wire runs down. Um, you like watching the new toys. These things will not block. They will last for a long time, and I just love it. I love it that a couple of Australian guys have got together, or three of them, and decided to make these things available. Men's sheds are taking these up by the truckloads. So they're foolproof. Turn it on, you saw when I turned this machine on, that gate up there opened up. The only thing I had a bit of mucking around down the bottom. But I'm getting something to, to change all of that. Now, why am I going to six inch? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The statistics on six inch, you would think going from four inch to six inch is only you know, two inches wider in the diameter of the pipe. Well, there's my evidence that I put before you. So a circle's area is pi r squared. That's basic schoolboy mathematics. So half of 100 millimeters, which is four inch close enough, is 50 millimeters. 50 times 50 times 22, because that's the top half of pi. Then the denominator is seven. It's the bottom half of pi. Equals 7857 square millimeters. Six inch, 75 by 75 by 22 divided by seven is 17,678. Two and a quarter or 2.25 difference. It's huge. Now, people have also been concerned, saying that, Dave, you're not going to get the airflow through your system anymore because you're pulling a whole lot more air. Dust is going to settle in the six inch pipes. Well, the six inch pipe is only going to be running across the top of the ceiling and then down to the extractor. There are no downhill sections of six inch pipe. All of my downhill sections are going to be four inch. That's going to increase the velocity as it gets the dust up to the main trunk and it's going to work. One other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my dust extractors inlet from a five inch inlet to a six inch inlet. And I'm not going to show you how I'm going to do that because it's a little trick that I'll do in the video when I go about doing this whole thing. I hope to put the six inch system in next week. God willing, there's a couple of other things I have to do. I have to go to a funeral one day. Um, I have to go to work. And also I want to drop in and see John during the week as well. So. That's what's happening there. Uh, what's next on the show is, I was talking about the box. I haven't put the hinges on it yet. Cole sent me some beautiful hinges, but they were a little bit too small. So I decided against putting those on and I want to use concealed hinges. I don't want you to see any hinges along the back here. I did say I was going to do a little bit of work on it during the week and I did. I haven't put the hinges on because I haven't got them yet. I'm getting them tomorrow, I think. But inside, there's the purple heart. I think the screen is fine. It's full up, up rate. I have not 
had any dropped frames whatsoever. It's going perfect. Let's put this here. And inside here now, inside my box. <laughs> Do you think my plane should live in here? I, it doesn't look magic. So there's the plane and the um, 90 degree fence. And that's the inside of the box at this stage. Now I use Cole's system of putting a ribbon, super glued it to the underside of this infill panel. And so I can pull that out like so, push it back in. Now I couldn't right at the beginning because I got, you know what I'm like, I got really excited and put this in without that ribbon. I couldn't get the rotten thing out, it's such a tight fit. So I got a very, very small standard flat screwdriver, very, very small and created a tiny hole here with, through this ply, because this ply is pretty soft. And then I got a meat skewer and pushed it in that tiny hole to pop the base out. I was thinking, oh, you know what I'll have to do? No, no, no problem, no problem. Excellent. I was thinking I'd have to kind of slide a knife in the side here somewhere, try and leave it, and then I'd stuff up the base and have to do a new one. But this looks beautiful. So the next thing I was going to do is show you how I get them perfectly matched. They came, as I said, they came off the saw really nicely, but there was a tiny little area where it caught and it, I could see it and it was bugging me. Piece of melamine. See that? Just a piece of melamine. And I've got 180 grit paper on that side and 80 grit paper on this side, and I've joined it up. And I'll tell you what, I'll do a little bit of a, a uh, demonstration for you before we turn the show off. Um, let's go with the lid. So it sits on there, and then you just move it backwards and forwards. Now, thanks for that, Ash. What I need to do also is let you know you, you say you can see how that works. That next week, when I find my mouse, there it is, found it. Tomorrow, tomorrow at night, Woodwork and Whiskers has a thing called Monday Meter. Now, ordinarily, Ash waits, that's who owns it, Ash. No, ordinarily, Ash waits until Monday night, and it's actually a surprise. You don't get to know who it is until the show is actually running. It's a 10 minute show on. Woodwork and Whiskers Instagram. And let me see if I've got a slide here you can have a quick look at. Oh, there you go. I've spilt the beans, let the cat out of the bag. It's going to be a little bit about me pre YouTube and also a bit about the YouTube as well. So tune in tomorrow at seven o'clock Australian Eastern Daylight Time and uh, you can have a look at that if. You want to. Uh, Ash has many, many people. Mostly he focuses on Australian creators uh, and also there's some international creators as well, which is, is great. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but I'll tell you what, since I did this, I, Ash sends a, a list of questions for me to answer. So I answered them and sent them and I am a cheeky bugger. <laughs> so I sent them back to him and as you know, a bit of video. And I was sitting on the edge of the bench here and I couldn't believe I slowly and slowly, I've been putting weight on. I had to, hadn't realized because I'm standing up all the time. When I sat down, this bloody big gut hangout. Since then, I've dropped four kilos on purpose. <laughs> um, you can use glass if you want to. I just found that this bit of melamine worked really well. It is multiple pieces. You can see it just works so well. It marries up brilliantly. Uh, th that side is multiple pieces, so it's a piece of the uh, dark, non-coloured, coloured paper. So the 80 grit has no colour on it. The other ones are yellow, green, blue, orange, that kind of stuff, and white for 120. This is 80 grit, so that's the width that I had, and then I cut a couple of small pieces across the bottom, contacted it down, and with the spray contact that I used, I left this upside down on a very, very flat bench and put a whole heap of weights on it. I put a couple of photos on Instagram showing everyone. Uh, yeah, James, don't you tell anyone. This is just for my viewers on my show. So Ash, Ash is keen to build his uh, Instagram channel and good on him. 
because he's doing a community service, he gets nothing for doing this. There's a couple of companies sponsor what he does, and that's basically to cover a little bit of his time. But I'll tell you now, being a creator, doesn't matter how much money people give you, it's not enough. <laughs> you go broke. People seem to think that if you're on YouTube, you're rolling in money. That's got to be the biggest fallacy out there. You need to be on 100,000 subscribers plus to be able to put food on the table. That's all you're going to get. If you get up to a million, well, good on you. And you might make some dollars there. But, you know, up until 100,000, forget it. Absolutely forget it. All right. I think that's the end of it. I'm going to have a quick read through here. I hope you've enjoyed the show. If you like the show, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the second channel. Check the affiliate links because I enjoy eating. <laughs> Why not? Um, so let me look over week through here. The custom light fittings, which are so easy to make. Uh, you just have to stop and think. And don't do the first thing that comes into your mind. Sleep on it. Um, the cedar box sanding. Uh, the dust extraction happening pretty soon. I'm really cool happening about that. Very, very excited. Um, John had his kidney out and that's just brilliant. Woodwork and whiskers. Uh, my Patreon patrons, John Johannes Moa, John Parra, Vincent Yang, John Lafferty, Peter Woolworth, Brian Del Vecchio, Justin Bailey, Brett Guthrie, Mike Dim, uh, Wayne Cargill and John Lynch. Thank you very much. And thank you for a couple of people that joined during the week in a lower levels. It all helps me big time. Thank you so much for taking the time to consider supporting what I do here. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and let's see if we can do this one. I shall see you all next week. Bye, or maybe even tomorrow night, Instagram TV, Woodwork and Whiskers.